Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Letters of apology are a common type of IELTS letter. This lesson will show you how to write them step by step. Here's what the lesson includes. The question structure, the letter structure, formal or informal, how to tell the difference, the greeting and sign off, how to generate ideas, and it also includes two sample letters. First, the structure of the question. All questions for IELTS letters have the same structure and they're made up of three parts. Part one is the topic, part two the person you must write to, and part three what you should write about, listed as three bullet points. Here's a sample question for a letter of apology, with the three parts illustrated. Your neighbour has written to you to complain about the noise from your flat. Write a letter to your neighbour. In the letter, explain the reason for the noise, offer your neighbour an apology and tell them what action you will take. The first sentence gives the topic of the question, which is that your neighbour has written to you to complain about the noise from your flat. The second sentence tells you who you should write to, in this case your neighbour. And the three bullet points tell you what you should write about. You need to explain the reason for the noise, offer your neighbour an apology and also tell them what action you'll take about the problem. Understanding the different parts of the question will help you to quickly analyse and plan your answer. To help you plan, use the letter structure I'm about to show you. For a full lesson on planning, study my lesson on how to plan IELTS letters. I put a link to it in the notes below this video. The layout of your letter should follow the structure of the question and consist of four paragraphs with a greeting at the beginning and a sign-off at the end. Use this easy to remember six-part structure. Start with the greeting which will be dear whoever you're writing to. In paragraph one state the purpose of the letter, that is your reason for writing. In paragraph two write about the first bullet point. In paragraph 3, write about the second bullet point. And in paragraph 4, write about the third bullet point. Then finally, sign off your letter. All you need to do to create your plan is to add in the details from the question, like this. The person we're writing to is a neighbour, so that's who we'll address in our greeting. Paragraph 1 is the reason or purpose for writing which is to apologise for the noise. Paragraph two will be about the first bullet point, which is to explain the reason for the noise. And paragraph three will be about the second bullet point, where we'll offer the neighbour an apology. And finally, paragraph four will be about the third bullet point, where we'll tell them what action we'll take to deal with the problem. And finally, we'll sign off the letter. IELTS letters must be written in the appropriate tone and style. There are two options. Formal to someone you don't know or don't know well and informal to a friend. It's essential that you're able to identify what type of letter you're required to write. Follow this rule. If the question includes the word friend, use informal language. If the question does not include the word friend, use formal language. The only exception is if the letter is to a close family member, when you would also use an informal tone. One situation that can be confusing is where the person you have to write to is a neighbour, as in our sample question. Assume that you do not know them very well and keep the letter formal. This leads us on to the opening of the letter, the greeting. It's most likely that you would know the name of your neighbour. So make one up for them, for example, Mrs Dixon. If you did not know their name, you would write Dear Sir or Dear Madam. If you were writing an informal letter to a friend, you would use their first name, such as Dear John. The greeting will determine how you sign off your letter. For a formal letter, there are two main options for signing off. The correct one will depend on who you're addressing. 
Use yours sincerely if you started the letter with dear and the surname, for example, dear Mrs Dixon. Or use yours faithfully if you started the letter with dear sir or madam. You could also use kind regards. This is formal but friendly and is appropriate for many situations. It's particularly useful if you struggle to remember how to spell sincerely and faithfully. Always sign off a formal letter with your full name. For example, yours sincerely, Jackie Spear. For an informal letter to a friend, use one of these phrases followed by your first name. All the best, see you soon, or keep in touch. For example, keep in touch, Jackie. For our sample letter, we'll use this greeting and sign off. Dear Mrs Dixon, yours sincerely, Jackie Spear. We're now ready to think up some ideas to write about. We have the guidelines of the three bullet points to help us, so it won't be difficult. With only 150 words to write, you won't need many ideas. Just make sure that you write about each bullet point and develop each idea fully. They don't have to be the best ideas you could possibly think of. Go with your first thoughts and don't waste time trying to think of better ideas. Just make sure that they're directly related to the bullet points. Note them beside each bullet point on the exam paper like this. For explain the reason for the noise, I've noted down having the flat rewired. For offer your neighbour an apology, I've jotted down Sorry the noise has disturbed them. And for tell them what action you'll take, my idea is ask the electrician to be as quiet as possible and pay for additional electrician to so the job's finished sooner. So those are my ideas. And that's our planning complete. Once you've had some practice, you'll be able to do this in just a few minutes. Taking time to plan makes writing IELTS letters far quicker and easier than if you don't do this step. You will also write a better letter and get higher marks. So let's write our letter. Here's our plan again with all the notes added in. Pause the video if you want to spend a few minutes studying it. We've already decided on the greeting, so we'll start by writing paragraph one. In the first paragraph, you must state the reason for writing the letter, that is, its purpose, which is to apologise for the noise. Many students make the mistake of missing this purpose sentence out, but it's very important, and including it will gain you marks. It only requires one sentence, and here's an example of an appropriate one for our letter of apology. I am writing to apologise for all the noise coming from my flat over the past few days. And here's a top vocabulary tip. Do not use contractions in formal letters. They are informal language. For a letter of apology to a friend, it would be appropriate to write, I'm writing to apologise or to say sorry for, but not in a formal letter. In the second paragraph, you write about bullet point one, which is to explain the reason for the noise. My idea is that I'm having the flat rewired. Remember to keep the language formal for this question. Aim for around 50 words for paragraphs 2, 3 and 4. You could write something like this for this paragraph. I am having the whole place rewired at the moment as I was experiencing some electrical faults that could not be repaired. The old wiring has been in since the flat was built and needed replacing so I had no choice but to undertake this necessary work. The third paragraph should cover the second bullet point, which is to offer your neighbour an apology. You could write something like this. I do appreciate that there has been a lot of banging going on during the day. I sincerely apologise for this and regret that you have been disturbed. I was hoping that most of the work would be done while you were out at work, but I admit that it did continue into the evening the other day. Paragraph 4 addresses the third bullet point, which is to tell them what action you will take. My idea is to ask the electrician to be as quiet as possible and to pay for an additional electrician so the job will be finished sooner. You could write something like this. 
To get the job finished as soon as possible, I will employ an additional electrician. Although there will inevitably still be some noise, I will ask him to be as quiet as possible and be sure to finish by five o'clock, when I believe that you usually get home. Now we just need to add the sign-off we decided on earlier, and our letter is complete. Here's our finished letter of apology. Pause the video and read through it. Note how all the elements come together, and the ideas flow from one to the next. This is what you're aiming for in your letter. To get some practice writing IELTS letters of apology, write a letter for this question. You have just missed a friend's party. Write a letter to apologise. In your letter, apologise to your friend, explain why you did not attend the party, and say what you plan to do to make up for missing the party. This letter is to a friend, so must be written in an informal tone and style. Use the planning structure I've just shown you to plan before you start writing. Here's a sample letter. Can you identify the language and grammar structures I've used to give it an informal tone? Notice that it contains contractions. You'll find lessons on other common IELTS letter topics on the website and my YouTube channel. I've put a link to the IELTS writing menu page where you'll find all the lessons in the notes below this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another lesson soon. Goodbye for now.